Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Broyas Bohemia, The Architect of the Circle and Mid-Century Houses in New England by James Crump, uh, published by Monacelli. James Crump wrote, Marcel Breuer is perhaps best known for being a seminal figure in the Bauhaus, both in its original location in Weimar and after 1925 in Dessau under the direction of his mentor and later partnered and colleague, Walter Gropius. The immense literature devoted to Breuer's furniture designs, interiors and his early forays with Gropius into the built environment is matched by the scholarly attention paid to his tenure at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design, under Gropius' aegis, and his tutelage of those who would join him in the so-called Harvard Five between 1938 and 1946. Later, in the early 1950s, Breuer applied himself to a new course, in an approach that later came to be called brutalism, beginning with his role in the design of the UNESCO headquarters in Paris and the commission for St. John's Abbey and University Church in Collegeville, Minnesota, monumental projects that kept him busy for most of that decade. Counted among his most popular, though controversial, brutalist works is the Whitney Museum of American Art, completed in 1966, the same year in which Breuer also completed a residential commission for a returning client and friend named Rufus Stillman. This U-plan house, with a nod toward the vernacular architecture of the Mediterranean, is constructed largely of local fieldstone, white painted stucco and steel, a curious anomaly in Breuer's waning residential practice in that period. During this time, when large institutional and civic commissions dominated his attention and characterized his architectural reputation, Stillman House too, as it has come to be known internationally, is pivotal to examining a geographically concentrated array of Breuer's projects, civic and corporate as well as residential, in Litchfield County, Connecticut, Wellfleet, Massachusetts and elsewhere in New England. The intersection of Rufus Stillman and his social circle and the work Breuer realized in this region during this period hold a key to understanding Breuer personally and professionally. While his bold, large-scale buildings projected the persona of the heroic architect paving the way for the future of global modernism, the houses that he designed for a small cadre of clients, whom he would also count as friends, arguably define his essence as an architect. Breuer's Bohemia explores an enclave of these houses commissioned by a community of left-wing intellectuals led by Stillman, Breuer's personal Medici and a partisan for change. Stillman was an enforcer of modernism whose obsession with building in his own time flew in the face of a conservative post-war establishment that favored the status quo and possessed little regard for change or modernization. Breuer's and his assertive patrons challenged New England traditions, but in so doing, these hard-driving clients also struggled with personal shortcomings and loss, perhaps somewhat connected to the architecture itself. It was a time of bohemian pleasure, with decadent parties, heavy drinking and bonhomie, but also adultery, broken marriages and suicide. Breuer's Bohemia stitches together the progressive social fabric supporting these iconic works of residential architecture while illuminating the complex personal stories of the individuals who commissioned them. For a variety of reasons, Breuer's residential practice, while remarkable, has nevertheless garnered less attention than the architect's larger, often monumental works of the 1950s and 60s. The working schemata that Breuer put into place in his house designs beginning in the late 1940s displays an originality that is difficult to refute, and yet has in some regards since been forgotten, dismissed or overlooked. This book intends to retrieve the spirit of these commissions and their elaborate histories and to fill in some of the mysterious lacunae associated with this aspect of Breuer's work in general, and in particular the context for this unusual string of residential and other commissions in New England that spans the early 1950s to the mid-1970s. 
Who were these individuals who insisted on Breuer designed homes and what were the stories that led to their construction? While Breuer was being pulled to urban centers around the globe as a prototypical star architect, he was constantly returning to this community of clients, with Rufus Stillman at its center. These New England projects possess a local dimension and involved community dynamics, but many are also infused with an internationality that renders these structures important links in Breuer's immense output in every category of architecture. The residential work represented creative opportunities that Breuer clearly relished and considered laboratories for his more ambitious civic and institutional commissions, such as the Whitney Museum and the IBM Research Center in Lagode, France. This story also takes us to Wellfleet, Massachusetts, the site of the prototypical artistic community and enclave envisioned by Breuer himself, that included fellow Bauhauslers seeking repose and inspiration from nature. There, Breuer built cottages for himself and the artist and fellow Hungarian Georgi Kepes, of the same experimental design for a cantilevered longhouse in the woods that initiated the vocabulary the architect would employ in his residential practice thereafter. A number of the lively, eccentric characters that made up Breuer's raucous, intellectual, well-fleet Bohemia were European expats. Gropius and his wife Ize, Kepesh and his wife Juliet, Herbert Bayer, Eros Sarinen and family, Laszlo Molinaghi, Annie and Joseph Albers, Saul Steinberg, Santi Shavinsky and Russian-born Serge Chermayev. Among the residential projects that resulted from the relationships fostered in this high-spirited social scene are the Scott House, 1948, the Breuer and Kepesh Cottages, 1949, and the Edgar Stillman Jr. House, 1953. With this book and its accompanying film, I have been fortunate to meet fellow Breuer enthusiasts and residents of the many Breuer houses peppering New England particularly those in Connecticut and Massachusetts. These interactions led me to gain unprecedented access not only to the private historic residences featured in this volume, but also to the personal stories accompanying them. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me and see you in the next video. Bye.